Hey everybody, Steve Crowner, the Dog Soldier here. Welcome back. I'm sorry to put you through that process of entering the email and all that other bullshit, but listen, it's for a reason. I'm not going to sell your information. I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to sell it to the Russians. I'm not going to have the Muslims chase you down. It's pretty much just simple. I wanted to lump you guys in a group where I could share the badassness of hand calling on and on and on. You guys will have updates on new webinars, updates on new products from Doug so Dog Soldier. You'll have um, updates on offers to coyotecalls.com. We're going to have all kinds of cool things going on. So before we get the webinar started, remember, go to coyotecalls.com. That's where you'll find the Dog Soldier hand calls. Use your coupon code. Get 10% off your first Dog Soldier hand call order. Because I'm telling you what, it's going to be one of the best things you ever do. Now, I'm not saying these hand calls are going to make you the baddest predator hunting in the world, but with a little practice, you'll be the badass sounding predator hunter in the world. And that's just a little piece of the pie, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But for you guys that are interested in buying the new Legend Series hand calls by Dog Soldier, I'm going to go through all seven, and I'm going to show you the sounds I utilize out of these hand calls, and then we're going to talk about MFK diaphragms, and then I want to talk about my basic hand calling pretty much stand. I just, it's pretty basic, and it'll get more dynamic and more dynamic as we go on throughout the year. But if you want more dynamic uh, explanation or definitions, don't forget the Dog Soldier podcast on iTunes and Google Play, and you can also just download the Dog Soldier app on any phone. All right, let's get started. So, the new Legend Series hand calls by Dog Soldier was five hand calls that I wanted to come up with, the enclosed reads, that I wanted to come up with that I could hit every pitch and sound that I desired as a predator hunter. I won the world in 2010, uh, world all-around predator calling championships, and I, I had uh, a couple closed read hand calls on my lanyard, and I had an open read hand call on my lanyard, and, and I was howling with diaphragms. So, you know, I've been doing this for about 20 years, and it's not new to me, and I kind of know what I want. Is that the best? I'm not for sure if it's the best for everyone, but it's the best for me, and it damn sure gives you a great place to start. So let's talk about the Legend 1C. The Legend 1C is a screaming cottontail. I call it the screaming cottontail because if you don't put cottontail behind something or you don't put jackrabbit behind something, the general market will not buy it. This ain't necessarily just a cottontail rabbit screaming but it's higher pitched like a cottontail, but it has that gravelly sense of sound in it as well. I like gravelly rabbits. I also like high pitched rabbits, don't get me wrong, but I really like a little bit of graveliness in there with it. Well, this Legend 1C allows you to really put the air to it, really scream, get them high pitched squeals inside the sound along with that graveliness. So this is the Dog Soldier Legend 1C and this is how I blow it. That's the Dog Soldier Legend 1C, and that's exactly how I utilize it to kill lots of coyotes. Now let's talk about the Legend 2J. Now the Legend 2J is the same mouthpiece, same barrel, just a lot. They're all five, pretty much the same mouthpiece and same barrel. What I've done is optimize the reed to be able to pull off the sounds that I want with different JC reeds. Um, you can take one Legend 2J and be successful all year long. But there's situations that you're going to run into where you need different sounds. Uh, it's like turkey hunting. Sometimes turkeys will gobble up box calls. Sometimes they'll gobble up diaphragms and vice versa at different times of the day or different times of the week. Same thing with hand calls. I feel coyotes are triggered by volumes and pitches and tones. And now these hand calls allow me to hit everything I want. And I don't have to carry a caller in the field. And I damn sure don't spend, have to spend a house payment getting ready to go coyote hunting. If you guys are watching this webinar and you're concerned about deer management, turkey management, 
and stuff like that, which I hope you are because we tried to serve this up to you guys. Listen, 80% depredation rate in the eastern United States with coyotes and deer. It's horrible. You wouldn't believe how bad raccoons and coyotes are on turkeys. Out of 5,000 eggs, only two turkeys, and don't quote me on this, but I believe the numbers are right, but only two turkeys out of 5,000 eggs make it to four years old. Um, so, I mean, this is a problem that we have to fix, and we have to do our part as hunters and outdoorsmen and pitch in and help control the predator population. So the Legend 2J is a really gravelly, it's called the low jack. It's a really low gravelly jackrabbit sounding call. Um, this is one of my go-tos. I love it. It works all over the United States all year long, and I dig it. Here's what the Legend 2J sounds like. If you notice, it's a good bit lower than the 1C, and it's really gravelly. It also allows you to get them what I call chuckles in there. If you guys have ever seen a rabbit in real life screaming like hell, they got a lot of them little, them little, they got a lot of them chuckles in there. And with the low C and the reed that I picked, or excuse me, the, the low jack, the 2J with the reed I picked, I'm allowed to get really low, really gravelly, and I can also bring it up really loud and gravelly and raspy without blowing it out or getting into them high-pitched sounds. So that's the Legend 2J, the low jack. The Legend 3F. Um, it's probably one of my favorites, and, and I'll tell you why. The reason it's one of my favorites is because I utilize this sound, or excuse me, I use utilize this call in reed placement or type of reed to make the sound that not a lot of people use because it's just not as cool. I mean, plain and simple, it's just not as cool. And it's a simple fawn ball. I do get up there and I try to get raspy and stuff like that, but it's just a simple fawn ball. That allows me, this read allows me to get that really nice crisp fawn ball and get the volume I want without it just breaking over or what us hand callers call breaking out or breaking the read or, or uh, locking it up. The Legend 3F, if you get a 3F, it's definitely a sound that not a lot of people use, which is really good. That's a great point. And when you get them hung up coyotes, it'll get them out from behind them bushes really well, but also as a general call, if you just sit down, it's real subtle. It's a nice fawn ball, and you wouldn't believe how good that sound works. It's not as cool as what you see on TV or some of the other places, but it's definitely a killing sound that I think you should utilize. The Legend 4HB. Now, it stands for high bird. It's pretty simple. It's a bird sound, and you can also do a little bit of a rodent on it, but it's just a really crisp bird sound and read. Um... Great for bobcats, great for coyotes, great for great for pressured areas that a lot of people ain't using a high pitched bird, etc. But also it gets me into that spectrum of bird sounds and rodent sounds without that raspiness or graveliness, and it just really nice and crisp and high pitch. I'm making that sound is I'm just uh, twiddling my tongue <laughs> just like that and this is a good time to talk about the barrel on the uh, legend series hand call so the barrel is squishy like that okay you can actually work these you don't have to that's just something I've done for over the years, and we all use our hands. Just 
just kind of change the sound up. But these barrels allow you to get that really high pitched bird sound on the Legend 4 HB. Now let's talk about the Legend 5 RB. This is one of my favorites, and it's actually one of the favorites of a lot of people that have bought this call. You can make all kinds of sounds on them, but this is more of a raspy bird. Um, it's got a... If you can hear that gravelly, raspy sound in it, you know I'm a fan of that. But also it's got that really squeaky, high-pitched bird in there as well. Almost meadow larky or... Uh, um, gosh, I can't name the bird right now, but this... When it comes to bobcats, and when it comes to hung-up coyotes, or when it comes to uniqueness, the 4HB and the 5RB is very sought after. These are killing calls. That is the legend 5RB. A very raspy bird type sound that is a cat killing machine and I get a hundred pictures a week people sending in um, success pictures with these hand calls and there's been a lot of bobcats and a majority of them have something to do with the 5RB now let's talk about the two open reads by dog soldier now the reason these are called legend series is because major Boddicker a very famous predator caller a pioneer critter calls tone, he makes these tone boards for me what we do is we read them to our liking and we brought them back and I mean we're we're really killing a lot of stuff with them we're really howling a lot with them but they really are a great hand call that I don't think you should give up if you're a hand caller and don't be scared of open reads even though I'm an enclosed read guy a lot of people like an open read because they're very versatile so I'm gonna go over with them right now so to start off with the distress this is the major red. It's just a nice little tone board. You can get high pitch sounds or low pitch sounds. And how do you achieve these? Is the closer to the barrel is low, the closer to the end is high. That's high. That's low. A lot of people say use your lips um, to do predator stress and use your teeth to howl on an open read. I tend to use my teeth doing the distress sound too. But I'm constantly opening my jaw and using my diaphragm inside as well to help me achieve the sounds that I want. That is the Legend Major Red. Now you can do all kinds of sounds on this open read. Them are pretty basic sounds, and this webinar is pretty basic, but once you get these in your hands, you're gonna figure out how to make all kinds of different sounds with a little bit of practice. Now the Legend Black Dog. Now this is an open read howler, and it's very versatile. You can do all kinds of sounds on it, and it actually has extensions to the barrel. And you can change tones, pitches, and back pressure by removing pieces of the barrel if you would like. Um, I tend to howl with it just like this. Um, same thing. The further you get up on the tone board, the deeper. And out here is high pitch. So if you're howling, what I do is I bite down probably about right there. Just a long, lone howl is my favorite sound. But you can get down here on the end and be really high pitched. Really high pitched howls, or you can get really low. What you got to remember on an open read, when you do get down here and you try to howl really low, if you noticed in that howl there was a break, if you have that much read 
what we call at the end of our howl. If we're howling right here and you got that much, there will be a break in sound because with the slight with the slight change of air pressure, the reed works different. But with that being said, if you're howling and you break a howl, don't worry about it. The stand's not over. Everything's good. Just howl. Be confident. And the reason I have the black dog is because I like answering myself back with an MFK diaphragm or I'll howl with an MFK diaphragm and answer myself back with the black dog. That introduces two coyotes into the situation. I can actually do a multiple amount of coyotes on this call, just like I can with an MFK diaphragm with tongue placement. So don't discredit an open reed howler if you are a successful diaphragm howler. But for some of you people out there that don't howl a lot on, um, on uh, diaphragms or, or you can't use a diaphragm, the Black Dog's the ticket. Probably one of the most user-friendly tone boards I've ever used in my whole career. Here's If you're howling with a Black Dog, here's what, what, what you should sound like or what I sound like when I'm on a typical stand. Pretty much that simple. I just put my teeth right here. And blow air out through your diaphragm muscles down here. That's where you need to, that's where you need your air to come from. You don't fill your lips up with air and start blowing. You use your diaphragm down here in your belly. Um, another good sound that you can use on the black dog. Now I I uh, use this sound to win the world championships. Help me win the world championships with in 2010. And I call it the coyote the coyote fox fight. Pretty much just put my lips up here. I growl with my voice and the diaphragm at the same time and put some canine pup in distress, which we'll talk about in just a second. But this is some cool stuff you can do with an open read. sounds that you will utilize the rest of your life to get them called in coyotes that hang up to come that extra little bit and get shot. Pup and distress on the open reeds are very simple. Start up here, the end of the tone board, and slide back. Just like that, okay? That's what you should sound like if you have a black dog or a major red. It's not really necessarily what you should sound like, but if you need a sound to get started or if you want to be more confident in the in the woods, them are the sounds that I make to be successful with all the Legend Series hand calls. Now, before we get started into the basic stand, I do want to talk about MFK diaphragms. MFK diaphragm howlers, uh, Tori and Tori Lynn Cook, um, and all the other bunch, Jason Gross, Close, Dave Stuffs, they're, they're family to me. Um, we got hooked up a long time ago. I won the world championships blowing a diaphragm, and I tried to make my own diaphragms, and I just couldn't simply be the best at making a diaphragm. So that made me find the people that could build, could build a diaphragm the best, and that's how we got into business together. Um, when I'm using diaphragms, and we'll talk about it here in just a second, it's pretty simplistic how I use diaphragms. But I'm going to show you, um, and I'm not going to get too dynamic into the sounds I make, but I want to show you the sound that I use 99% of the time on every stand, and that's just the lone howl. Now when you get a diaphragm, there's a, there's a tab at the bottom of the frame, and that goes down against your tongue, just like this. Now, everybody wants to know, well, how do you use a diaphragm or how do you start off? Well, first of all, if you're using a diaphragm, one thing about it is you got to find the sound. Once you find the sound, then you can tailor it to your mouth and your diaphragm and complete them howls. I just put it in there, blow air out, move my mouth around till I find that sound, and then I tailor it to a howl. And then that way, when I'm on stand and with a little bit of practice, I sound the most realistic that I can sound. Okay, I found a how. I'm going to keep practicing that. I'm going to keep practicing that all the time until I get good and I sound like this. If you 
guys need to listen to a how and you want something to mimic and you're trying to use diaphragms, that's the sound that I use 99% of all stands. 99% of the time. Now, it's not as fancy as some of the sounds you can make, but it's a great sound, and it's going to kill you a lot of coyotes, and it's going to give you a great starting point. So remember, just put the diaphragm in your mouth, push the tongue to the top of your roof, find your sound, and then tailor it. It's going to take a little bit of practice. Now, canine pup in the, canine pup in the stress is I, I do a hut. <coughs> hut, hut, hut. That's how I bark. <laughs> Unless you want to get fancy, I don't bark much. Um, barking's a real easy way to get aggressive, and I'm not that aggressive of a howler, and I have more luck that way. But if you do want to bark, hut, 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 and you can achieve them, them, them barks. Canine pup in distress. I just found that sound, that real high-pitched sound, and then I, I just do like that with my jaw. I use that sound. I'll talk about it here in a minute, but I use that sound on 99% of every stand. Another sound that I make a lot of times on stands is just a whimper or a yip, an excited yip. A lot of people want to say it's breeding and yada, yada, yada. Well, what it is, an excited yip is a solicitation of, of attention from another coyote by a coyote. It's really that simple, and it sounds like this. Uh -huh. That's how I utilize the MFK diaphragms. Now let's go ahead and talk about stands real quick. We're going to be pretty basic and I'm going to wrap this up. Um, so what I want you to guys to do is I want you to know before we get started into how to make a stand is make damn sure that you pay attention to the basics and pay attention to details. Don't be seen, heard, or smelled before you get to your stand. There's not a possibility that you can't do that. Don't make the freaking stand, period. Coyotes will not tolerate this. I promise you, and unless they're just plumb stupid, they're not going to come to the call. Don't be seen, heard, or smelled. That's not talking to your buddies. That's not hunting with the wind of your back. That's not slamming car doors. And that's not walking across open cow pastures. That's where hand calling comes in. Electronic calls get you into the habit of feeling comfortable when that sounds away from you, which equals... You walk out in the middle of nowhere a majority of the time, and coyotes, I promise you, a majority of the time, if they're close, will see you. One thing about it, if you pay attention to that detail, don't be seen, heard, or smelled before you get to your stand, and you're using an e-collar, you're going to be right on top of coyotes. That gives them an extra advantage because they can see you walking across these cow pastures. If you're hand calling, you get to your stand, you nestle down into the shadows, you make a good solid stand and kill coyotes. Now, I'm not saying e-calling is horrible, and I'm not saying to, to sell your e-calls because I love e-callers. My bobcat hunting and my bobcat hunting career is revolved around e-callers. I love watching cats hunt, and I can do this with an e-caller where I can't with a hand call. I've hand called a lot of coyotes. You just got to be really careful, and you got to know how to, how to do it. Um, a lot of times with bobcats, I'm one minute off. Two or three minutes off or one minute on two or three minutes off and the same and the same and the same if you're in tight cover a bobcat won't tolerate you doing this and then pulling your hand down and looking around now a bobcat if you get on the 5rb and you're <laughs> they'll tolerate that even if they see you because they think you're a bird but the minute you drop your hand down and you start gawking off it's over so you got to really pay attention to details and you really got to know what you're doing and really pay attention when you're bobcat hunting. So I love e-callers bobcat hunting. Coyote hunting, you know, there's situations that I can steer a coyote like a truck with an e-caller that I can't with a hand call. But if you know how to handle coyotes and you want the experience to get to know how to handle coyotes, hand calling takes you to that extra level and throws you way over the top. Okay. So let's say you pay attention to detail, you get to your stand, okay? And if you go to the podcast, you can hear all about that stuff. 
but let's just, this is a basic stand when it comes to sounds. What I'll do when I sit down is I'll introduce a subtle coyote. Start off with a howl, real nice subtle lone howls, introduce a few, a few subtle coyotes into the stand, and then I'm just kind of chilling out. I'm not looking like this, but I'm, I'm really scanning the area, see if I've set any coyotes up or if they're coming to the call. Nothing happens in about a minute, minute and 30 seconds. I go to a, a distress sound. I might go to the major red. <laughs> Something real subtle, a little timider volume. This is the 1C. Might do that for a couple minutes, just kind of test the water, see what's happening, what's going on. And then I start picking up the volume a little bit. stay in distress about seven or eight minutes sometimes I'll do it one minute on two minutes off or two minutes on one minute off I just kind of play around with it and you guys are going to tailor it to your liking throughout the stands but I'll just play around with it a little bit sometimes I might just grab the 3F really don't matter what distress sound at this point is because I've just sat down and I'm making a pretty basic stand. I'll howl subtle, introduce some coyotes, I'll go into distress for seven or eight minutes. If nothing, Might get a little fancy, you know, introduce another subtle coyote. <laughs> Might throw in an off ball weird sound, you know, just scream like a rabbit two or three times and then and then just throw a couple coyotes in there like maybe a jackrabbit bit a coyote's nose or something. And then I'll just wait a few more minutes and then we're at about the 10 or 11 minute mark. I'll change up sounds again, a whole completely sound, but stay with distress. So as of now, I've done three different coyotes, three or four different distress sounds. If I've not got a coyote in by this point, it's probably the end of the stand or what I think's the end of the stand. And then I might do some canine pup in distress on either a diaphragm or the black dog. <laughs> Now, I usually end my stand with 30 or 40 seconds, a good canine pup in distress, and uh, see if I can trigger that coyote. At this point in the stand at 12 minutes, I've done three or four different distress sounds, three or four different howls, and then I move into pup in distress. So it's pretty basic. If you guys want more dynamic information, remember, go to the podcast on iTunes or, or Google Play, just search Dog Soldier, or you can find the app. It's really that simple. And don't forget, Dog Soldier airs January through July on the Sportsman channel. We have a YouTube channel. We're on Amazon Prime. Hell, we're everywhere.
But all I can say is I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you watched the webinar. I know a lot of people have been looking for it. And uh, I hope that covered everything I needed to cover with this webinar. And thanks for joining the email list because you're going to get more in the future. I promise. Peace out, homies. Hey, guys, thanks for joining me on the webinar. Man, that was a fun time. I love talking coyote hunting. I love blowing on hand calls. It's just a good time. Once again, I appreciate you guys subscribing to the email list. I appreciate the support you guys give us here at hand, uh, Dog Soldier and CoyoteCalls.com. And I'm really, really digging all we're doing for you guys because you guys are supporting us tenfold back. And that's why we just do everything we can. We answer all our emails. We answer all our messages. And we just want to do everything we can to help you guys be better predator hunters. That being said, once again, thank you very much. And thanks for watching the webinar.